Hey guys and welcome back for today's video where I want to discuss yet another handful of brand new polls that have been released over this past day and there continues to be some really positive news for the Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders particularly in the early states of Iowa and New Hampshire and we're now less than a week away from the Iowa caucuses, exactly a week away from this point in time, we're going to know who's won Iowa, the narrative that starts to get shaped out of that result, and then we're going to turn our focus and head into New Hampshire a week after that. And this entire past year has culminated and built to this point in time where we're right now on the precipice of heading into primary season. I'm very excited about it. I've literally made hundreds of videos talking about this race, going over the data, discussing the dynamics that have been at play over this past year, and I'm ready to get actual human beings to the polls voting for who they want to lead the Democratic Party, and I can't wait to go over the results. I invite you to Take this ride with me through the Democratic primary season as I continue to go over the polls, as well as make my predictions on who I think is going to win these races, and then also, of course, going over the results and seeing how everything plays out. It's going to be a very exciting time over the next handful of months. So jumping into it here, six brand new polls that I want to touch on. One of them is looking at the national picture of the Democratic primary, and then also after that, we have a lot of state-specific results. Starting here with the national poll from Quinnipiac and Joe Biden leading the way at 26%. He's up one point from where he was in the prior poll from this resource a couple of weeks ago when he was at 25%. Bernie Sanders takes another step forward. Relatively competitive, certainly at the top with Biden where he's at 21%. In the prior result, he was at 19. So he picks up two points. And this is actually really positive, particularly for Sanders, that he's within a reasonable distance there of Biden at the top in a Quinnipiac poll because... Throughout a good chunk of this process, Sanders has not polled all that well in a lot of these Quinnipiac national polls where for a reasonable amount of time, he was kind of in the lower teens, mid-teens, and consistently polling below his national averages in these Quinnipiac results where now he's been trending in a positive direction and becoming more competitive at the top. I mean, we just look a little over a month ago, he was in third place and 14 points behind Biden. Things have changed quite a bit from just that point in time where now he's within five percentage points. Then you see Elizabeth Warren there. She was really strong in these Quinnipiac polls back when she was at her height in the September to October range, but she's taken quite a significant step back in the last handful of results where now she's settled more so in the mid-teens. In this one, she's in third place at 15 percentage points. And then the rest of the field, we see Klobuchar is there at seven, Bloomberg's there at eight, Buttigieg at six, Yang at three. Steyer at two, um, and you can see below that, not much in the way of those particular candidates having a real opportunity to be competitive throughout this process. And really, it's feeling like a situation where Biden and Sanders at the top have the best opportunity to go on and win this thing. That's pretty clear cut. And then beyond that, I'd probably give Warren and Bloomberg the next tier in that list in terms of perhaps having something in the way of positive moments or momentum at some point throughout this process where they're not completely written off, but certainly they're going to have a bit of a tougher time than what we currently see with Biden and Sanders at the top. And then probably a tier beyond that, you have individuals like a Pete Buttigieg, uh, perhaps an Andrew Yang, an Amy Klobuchar, and then maybe even you could throw Tom Steyer into that mix, especially with some of these early states where we've seen him poll quite a bit better than what those national numbers are telling us. But again, that's yet another step down from even the tier that's just behind where Biden and Sanders are in terms of being very long shots at going on and winning this nomination. So now I want to go through five state-specific results. So we're going to head over to this Iowa State University poll that was just released this morning. And Bernie Sanders takes another step forward where compared to the prior result, which was taken more so in the middle of the portion of the month of December, so about a month and a half ago. Sanders now in first place at 24% of support. He gains three percentage points from the prior results. Elizabeth Warren is in second place in this instance at 19%. She picks up one point. Buttigieg, a really bad sign for him where he drops down to third place at 17%, losing seven percentage points from that December result from this particular polling resource from Iowa State. And then Biden hovering right there at the cutoff line of 15%, where 
He really wants to get over that number in terms of being in position to get as many pledged delegates as possible, even if he's not getting that first place result, at least getting over that 15 percentage point threshold. And I expect Biden to do that. I think this might be a little bit less bullish on him than I think what he's actually going to show on caucus night. So Biden's there at 15%. He stays even. And then Klobuchar takes quite a bit of a step forward here, gaining seven percentage points. It seems like out of all the candidates in Iowa right now, particularly over this past month, Sanders has made huge gains, but that's also been the case for Klobuchar. Unfortunately for the senator from Minnesota, she was starting at such a low point that even though she has taken quite a big step forward in a lot of these Iowa-specific polls, it's still a situation where she isn't cracking through to that 15 percentage point threshold. We'll see how things close here over this next week if she's able to get another boost in her numbers or not. But Klobuchar and Sanders both gaining has, in general, taken away from Warren. That's been a little less of the case, at least in this particular poll, where Warren is grabbing that 19% and taking that second place. Uh, and then you have Klobuchar there at 11%, again, gaining seven points from where she was back in mid-December. Then moving over to this American Research Group poll out of the state of New Hampshire. And these New Hampshire polls have been extremely bullish on Bernie Sanders this month. So this is a sample size of around 600. And that New Hampshire, or excuse me, that Iowa poll that I just went over that had a sample size was 655. Now talking about this New Hampshire poll, again, very positive here for Bernie Sanders, where he's really running away with it, grabbing 28% of the first choice among likely Democratic primary voters in the state. No one else actually in this particular poll is even getting over the 15 percentage point threshold where you have Biden at 13%. You have Buttigieg at 12 Elizabeth Warren at 11%, which is pretty devastating for her being the senator from the neighboring state of Massachusetts, significantly down to Sanders in this instance. And also not a great sign for Buttigieg where he's putting a lot of resources into trying to have success in Iowa and New Hampshire right out of the gate because that's essentially his only path forward to have success because his national numbers have been fading back and he's still significantly behind those upper tier candidates where he's hoping to get a boost out of these early results to possibly make him more relevant on the national stage. But he's also been taking steps back in a lot of these Iowa and New Hampshire polls where it looks like he's probably not going to go on and win either of those results. And then also for Biden, again, not a great sign for him at just 13 percentage points. He has essentially universal name recognition going into an area like New Hampshire. One would think that he would be reasonably competitive, but not great numbers for him again in this result. And then you have Gabbard at 8%, and Klobuchar at 7%. Undecided is down there at just 6%. Yang is at 5%. And you see how the rest of the field plays out in this American Research Group poll out of New Hampshire. So then we move over to another early state result. This one is out of the state of Iowa. And it is coming from Change Research. And quite a bit of movement in these change research numbers out of the state of Iowa compared to the prior result, which was taken all the way back in the middle portion of August. So we've had a number of months between that change research poll out of Iowa and where we're at right now. And Bernie Sanders sprinting out into first place gains 10 percentage points from that prior result at 27 percent. Buttigieg also gaining a bit here, picks up six points. In August, that was kind of an area where both Sanders and Buttigieg weren't doing all that great in comparison to where we had Biden and Warren, and that was definitely the case in that change research poll as well that had Sanders at 17 and Buttigieg at 13. They take big steps forward in this one. Biden staying more or less right around where he was back in August, where he was at 17%. This one, he's at 18%. But the big devastating one is for Elizabeth Warren, where she's down there at 15% losing 13 percentage points from the prior result where she was at 28 percent and then we see Klobuchar also taking a big step forward in Iowa but still below that 15 percentage point threshold that she really wants to build her way towards she pick up she picks up eight percentage points in that prior result she was at two Yang picks up three points Steyer picks up two percentage points and that's how the rest of the field plays out in this change research Iowa poll that was taken very recently, of course, January 22nd through the 26th, with 704 Democratic primary voters in the state of Iowa. And to wrap up this video, I want to close things out taking a look at two state-specific results from Iowa and South Carolina. But these particular polls I would take with somewhat of a grain of salt because this first poll out of Iowa is from Morningside College, which isn't a rated resource on 538. And I couldn't find anything in the way of at least recent historical polling data from this resource or out of the state of Iowa for that matter. And also it's a relatively small sample size of just 253. So a very large 
margin of error at 6.2 percentage points. And then the South Carolina poll comes from a Joe Biden pack. So that's also a situation where, again, you might want to take it with somewhat of a grain of salt. So we're going to start here with this Iowa poll. And it has Joe Biden leading the way at 19 percent, followed by Buttigieg at 18 percent. And then it has Warren and Bernie Sanders each at 15 percentage points, followed by Klobuchar, who's at 12 percent. And then everyone else is in the mid to lower single digits. So it's showing a relatively close and competitive race at the top. This one quite a bit less bullish on Bernie Sanders than what we have seen a lot of other Iowa polls taken during this particular period of time. This one was between January 17th through the 23rd. And then this South Carolina poll that was taken by a Joe Biden pack. It has him way out in front in the state of South Carolina. We see this in a lot of South Carolina state-specific polls, but this one is very bullish on Biden where he's at 44% statewide. And let me quickly get you the sample size on this one. It's 600 likely voters. And this one is a GQR research, which is rated at just a C plus on 538. And again, a Biden pack poll in this instance. So we have Sanders statewide just getting to that threshold of 15 percentage points. Steyer at 12 percentage points. He's putting a ton of effort into trying to have success in the state of South Carolina. And then you have Warren there at 10 percent, followed by Buttigieg at just 5 percent. And we see Pete Buttigieg continuing to have his issues with African-American voters where he's at just one percentage point in that instance. So those are the six polls that I wanted to touch on here in today's video. One national result, five state-specific ones, and a lot of very positive news, particularly for Bernie Sanders, not just on the national scale where he's closing the gap a bit between himself and Biden on a consistent basis, but the fact that he's showing very strong signs in the early results right out of the gate in Iowa and New Hampshire. And the potential narrative that could be built out of that could be very bullish on Sanders and possibly further close that gap between himself and Biden. And What's really interesting about this dynamic, it seems like Sanders is kind of coalescing that progressive vote behind his campaign at the expense of Elizabeth Warren taking a step back, but also Biden not running away with things, even with, you know, Kamala Harris stepping down, Julian Castro, Cory Booker, Beto O'Rourke, a lot of individuals where it seems like probably more so their support would go for somebody like a Biden, maybe than some of these other upper tier candidates, but he hasn't been able to run away with things because... Mayor Bloomberg decided to throw his hat in the ring, and it's kind of inconceivable, and I actually heard this reported the other day, that Bloomberg threw his hat in the ring because he wanted to try to make things as tough as possible for Bernie Sanders, where Bloomberg felt like if he put a lot of money into this, he could pull some of those pledged delegates towards himself and make it tougher for any candidate to go on and win the majority of pledged delegates and then have a contested convention. Bloomberg, that's what he's hoping for. But really, at the end of the day, he's pulling away support more or less from an individual like a Joe Biden who might have been better positioned to go on and win in terms of the number of pledged delegates needed to win on the first ballot at the Democratic convention. But Bloomberg is making that task for Biden quite a bit more difficult because, again, he's pulling away support from Biden. He's not certainly not pulling much in the way of support away from somebody like a Bernie Sanders. But if you're a Bernie Sanders supporter, definitely be very happy about Bloomberg running because it's allowing Sanders to be more competitive at the top of the national polls with Joe Biden than probably where things would currently be if Bloomberg was not in the race. So those are my thoughts that I want to touch on here in today's video. And again, guys, we're getting very close to actually heading into primary season, getting real people actually voting and seeing how the data plays out. So subscribe to the YouTube channel as I go over those results and make my prediction videos. It's a very exciting time. And I hope to see you back here for my next video.